The last plate boundary that we're going to talk about is a conservative plate boundary. And I'm going to draw this one differently. I'm going to draw it as a plan view rather than a cross-sectional view. If you get asked to draw this plate boundary in the exam, the easiest way to do this is to draw um, a rectangle followed by another rectangle next to it, but at a slightly different slightly further up. And this is the boundary that we're talking about. So we need to show our plates. So these are two pieces of plates and we need to show them moving. So we'll put an arrow to show that that one's going in that direction and we'll put another arrow to show that that one's going in the same direction. Only what we'll say is this one is travelling at seven millimetres per year and this one here is travelling slower at five millimetres per year. OK, we can't see the convection currents in this diagram because they're underneath these two pieces of, of crust. Um, but what we have got is because this piece of crust is travelling faster than this piece, they're going to get stuck along this edge. Because remember, they're not sliding smoothly. These pieces of crust are sliding side by side and they're going to get stuck. And the pressure is going to be great along this edge. The friction is going to be great. And so let's just say they get stuck right about there and the pressure builds up at this point, up and up and up, until eventually the plates break free. That will send out earthquake ripples, seismic waves we call them. That is the earthquake. The point of break deep below the Earth's surface in the rock is known as the focus. And where it arrives on the surface here where we can see that is known as the epicentre. OK, and this is called a conservative plate boundary. Don't get it confused with constructive. We're not building anything here. It's conservative plate boundary. You won't get any volcanoes here because, as you can see, there is no gap being created for magma to rise up. There's no subduction into the mantle to create new magma. So you won't get any volcanoes here, but you will get earthquakes and the earthquakes will be violent. And that's simply because these plates will be getting stuck and jammed as they're trying to move alongside and the pressure will build up and up until eventually they break free. And that point of break is the focus. And if it's shallow, um, if it's a shallow focus, the shaking will be very violent. If it's a deeper focus, the shaking won't be quite so bad. And that is our conservative plate boundary. Don't forget to put arrows on your diagram to show movement. And with this one, I've had to put the rates on to show that they're moving at different rates. Um, and don't forget your starting point, which is always the convection currents in the mantle, which are moving the plates side by side in this example. Um, to link this to the real world, we could say that this is the North American plate and next to it is the Pacific plate. And I'm sure you've all seen the movie. The boundary, this fault line here, is known as the San Andreas, the San Andreas Fault. It's particularly famous and big earthquakes happen along this San Andreas fault line, okay, which is this boundary. And that's it for the conservative plate boundary.